of sleep and my uh, topic will answer these following question. It's why should our eyes shut? How much sleep do we need? And how can we have a good sleep? And my name is Nhi. So uh, I hope I can continue this presentation. About my contents, it divided into four parts. Part one, I'm going to be talking about what is a sleep and its benefits. Part two, I'm going to be talking about ideal sleep duration. And third one, it's a way to have a good sleep and some myths about it. And finally, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to jump into the conclusion. And we are going to talk about sleep. Well, you know, we sleep on a daily basis. If that's so, do you think you know sleep inside out? Well, if I was the one to answer that, I would say no, and neither do the scientists. It's something that seems so close, but actually so far away. But it's not so hard to define sleep, right? Well, sleep is a, peri is a period of reduced activity, and it's associated with typical posture. You can sleep in your back, you can be a side sleeper, but let's call it lying down with your eye closed. And sleep also results in a decreased responsiveness to external stimuli, and it is a state that relatively easy to reverse, which distinguishes sleep from other stages of reduced consciousness, such as hibernation and coma. And as you can see here, I mentioned sleep is an essence essential function, and I may tell you why. That's because sleep allows your body to, and mind to recharge, leaving you refreshed and alert you when you wake up. And a healthy sleep also helps the body remain healthy and stave off diseases. Without enough sleep, the brain cannot function properly, and this can impair your ability to concentrate, think clearly, and process memories. Now we know about sleep, then what makes us sleep? Do you ever wonder that? Well, I do. So I uh, went, to, uh, went to research for some factors that affect sleep. And it's shown that there are two main uh, factors, which are the internal one and the external one. About the internal one, we have body clock, which regulates your sleep cycle, controlling when you feel tired and ready for bed for, or refreshed and alert. This clock operates on a 24-hour cycle known as circadian rhythm. After waking up from sleep, you become increasingly tired throughout the day. These feelings we picked in the evening lead up to the bedtime. And the second thing we have is sleep drive, also known as sleep wake hormone tests, may be linked into and this linked into the adenosine, the organic compound produced in the brain and adenosine levels increase throughout the day as you become more tired and then the body breaks down this compound during sleep. That's the internal. Now we're talking about the external factors. The first one I'm going to say is the environment in which we sleep, mm, which is mainly, which are mainly mm, sound and light. How about the light effect? The light exposure can cause our biological clock to advance or delay, which affects our sleep and wake cycle. And light is one of the most important external faction, factors that can affect sleep. It does so both directly by making it difficult for people to fall asleep and indirectly by influencing the timing of our internal clock and thereby affect, affecting our prevent, preferred time to sleep. And a steady, more continuing monotone with no signal meaning can all induce sleep. For example, it can be the sound of the wheels of a train rolling on the tracks, or maybe a lullaby by a mother. And if the body of ours is in a quiet situation with no light, no sound, this impose, the impulses from the hemispheric receptor act evenly, also bringing about sleep. And you might wonder why I put um, medicines in our di di diet can affect our sleep quality. 
Well, that's because of the different ingredients those contain. For example, drinking too much coffee might cause insomnia, or taking size tricyclic anti-depression, which can cause depression, might make you feel sleepy as a side effect. And the and another one is jet lag and shift work. It's also uh, affects sleep. Well, individuals who travel across time zones or work in the night shift typically have two symptoms. One is insomnia, where they can't sleep and they're trying to sleep outside their internal phase. And the other one is excessive sleepiness, sleepiness during the time that their internal clock says that they should be asleep. Oh, that's the uh, main factors that affect sleep. Well, there are one more thing that one more thing that really important when we talk about sleep. It is the stages of sleep. Well, here I have uh, the um, the process of the sleep, and uh, one once we fall asleep, mm -hmm. our bodies follow a sleep cycle divided into four stages. The first three stages are known as non-rapid eye movement or shortened as NREM sleep. And the final stage is also known as rapid eye movement, which is, uh, and is, which is REM sleep. As you can see here, and you can see the some uh, initials. D stands for duration. P is for physical philosophy, sorry, philosophy, and BA is for brain action, activity, sorry, brain activity. Now we in, if we're in stage one of NREM, this stage marks the transition between wakefulness and sleep and consists of light sleep. Muscle here is relaxed and your heart rate, breathing, and eye movements begin to begin to slow down as to your brain waves, which are more active when you're awake. And stage one typically lasts for like five to 10 minutes. Then we move to stage two of NREM. Um, this second uh, stage is characterized by deeper sleep as a heart rate and uh, breathing rates continue slowing down and the muscles become more relaxed at moments will cease and the body temperature will decrease. Apart from some brief moments of higher frequency electrical activity, brain waves also remain slow and this takes about 10 to 15 minutes to process. And after that, we will have stage 3 of NREM. Um, about stage 3, it plays an important role in making you feel refreshed and alert the next day. Heartbeat, breathing, and brainwave activity all reach their lowest levels, and the muscles, muscles are as relaxed as they will be. And this stage will be longer at first and decrease in the duration throughout the night. It uh, typically lasts for like 45 to 19 minutes. The last stage we have is REM. Well, the first REM stage will occur for about 60 minutes after you fall asleep. As the name suggests, your eyes move, will move back and forth rather quickly under your eyelids. Breathing rate, heart rate, blood pressure will begin to increase. And dreaming will typically occur in REM sleep and your arms and legs will become paralyzed. It is believed this is intent to prevent you from some physically acting out on your dreams. The duration of each REM sleep cycle increases as the night processes, and numerous of studies have also linked REM sleep to memory consolidation, the process of converting recently learned experiences into long-term memories. The duration of REM sleep will decrease as so our edge, causing you to spend more time in the end REM stages when you get older. And these four stages will repeat cycl cyclically throughout the night until you wake up. And REM sleep constitutes about 75% of 
to 80 to 80 percent of, of each cycle you may also wake up briefly during the night but not remember the next day and these episodes are known as double v stages that's the basic things about the sleep now let's get into the benefits of being on bed how will we get well, the first thing we get is the proper cognitive and behavioral function. Let's turn the um, position, uh, let's turn the, well, this one backward. If we have insufficient amount of sleep, it can lead to serious repercussions. Some studies have shown sleep deprivation, deprivation leaves some people vulnerable to attention lapses, reduce cognition, delayed action and mood shift. Additionally, lack of sleep has been linked into higher risk for certain diseases and medical conditions. These include obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, poor mental health, and early death. Well, I think we have talked about Chopin's memories and how to stay active during the day prevent some ver various diseases in the um, definition. So I want to talk about how body growth. You know, health body growth, this one is really important at this stage of life when you are a teen and a young adult. Our body will continuously go grow until we are we reach 22. So sleep is an important factor that affect our body growth. And the next one is pretty um, important. It strengthens the immune system. I can show you why. When your body gets the sleep it needs, your body, when your, no, your immune cells and proteins get their rest, they need to find out whatever comes their way, such as cold and flu. And according to the well-rested sleep specialists over the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, Proper sleep can also make vaccines more effective, which is obviously a plus in this stage of um, pandemic. And we have our vaccine shots. Another benefit is control. It's sleep controls appetite or weight. Well, if you uh, decided to sleep late, it, um, your body will produce ghrelin it's a hormone that boosts appetite, and your body will also decreases the production of leptin. It's a hormone that tells you you are full. If we have to get about this, we will have a late night snacking, obviously. So that's why you will gain weight if you are sleep late. And do you know that sleeping can increase productivity? Well, in fact, sleep has been linked into improved concentration and higher cognitive function, both of which can help you be successful at work. But one restless night can leave you feel frazzled, making it more likely that you make mistakes. Another advantage is if you have a bad sleep, you will have a better mood. And really, it makes sense. If you sleep well, you wake up feeling rested and being rested helps your energy level soar. When your energy is full, life challenges won't annoy you as much. And if you are not annoyed, you are not angry. If you're not angry, you are happy. So that's why they say that we'll have a, be a better mood if you sleep. And another one is help avoid panda eyes. I'm sure that you don't want to meet, meet anybody if you have the dark circle in your face, really. Well, according to the specialist, we will spend about one third of our lifetime sleep. But however, let's look at some figures. Up to 45% of the global population have their health threatened by sleep deprivation, according to World Sleep Day statistics, this conduct in um, this conduct in uh, 2019, and to to be more specific, specific, in Vietnam we have about 
73% of our population has trouble sleeping, and this is announced by Princess Cruises and Wakefield Research in Relaxation Habits Survey. It's also conducted in uh, the year 2019. So I have found these uh, images of the previous um, research. So uh, let's see. You can see that clearly that about 37 of us are being, uh, having insomnia and we consume a lot of things before sleep. And, in the, and about the um, office worker in Vietnam, we used you, they usually have like seven days off just to sleep in. Well, that's definitely detrimentally, right? Well, I think I have talked about uh, the effect of if, if you don't sleep in the previous uh, saying. Now, just let's move to uh, the disadvantage of what if, if we overslept. Let's see. Problem associated with getting too much sleep is weight gain, which makes sense when you think about it. Sleep is a pretty low calorie activity, so if you're spending a lot of your day in dreamland, then you're not using that time to burn the calories from your day. One study showed that people who sleep for 10 hours or more each night are 21% more likely to become obese than those who sleep for just 7 to 8 hours. That's nuts. Another problem associated with too much sleep is back pain. People who spend long periods lying down, especially in a less than ideal position, or with an old pillow or a bad mattress, often struggle with back pain. This is particularly bad for oversleepers, so keep that in mind the next time you're struggling to drag yourself out of bed. As Ice Cube once said, you can do it, put your back into it. The third health issue linked to too much sleep, as well as too little sleep, is premature aging. Especially in older adults, chronic oversleeping can age your brain by as much as two years according to one study. What this means in the real world is you could develop problems with concentration, poor memory, and even a decline in problem-solving abilities. Besides, while there's nothing wrong with getting older, it's going to happen anyway, and you don't want to have spent your whole life asleep, right? And finally, one of the biggest issues affecting oversleepers is stress. Why? Well, because they often feel like there aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. So if you're spending more than 10 hours a day asleep and feeling overwhelmed when you're awake, then I think we may have found a solution. So, there you have it. If you're struggling with oversleeping and need a hand getting out of bed in the morning, then luckily for you, we've got a video with five tricks to help you get out of bed each morning. You can check that out in the link in the description down below. Otherwise, if you like this video, then I'd like you. That's it. As you can see clearly, if we uh, don't get enough sleep, we will have problems. But we also have problems if we oversleep. Then the question is, what is the ideal sleep duration? Well, let's get into it. So this is the ideal, ideal duration of how much do humans need to sleep. Well, this is uh, the figure that conducted by uh, the National Sleep Foundation, which had the had their headquarters in uh, Washington DC of USA of the USA and uh, to conduct this, they uh, did a research on about 18 people, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it happened for like um, two weeks and they come with the, this figure. Let's see, if you are in the younger age, from newborn to uh, school age, you will need about like 30 minutes, 30 hours or 11 hours to sleep each night, each day, sorry. And uh, let's focus on the four uh, factors here, which are teen, young adult, adult and older, older adult, since we are in this edge gate, gap, edge group, sorry. If you are a teen, you should sleep for like eight to 10 hours each day and a little bit older than that you should need about like seven to eight to nine hours. And if you're full, fully grown ups, you will need for like same amounts to the young adult, which is seven to nine hours. 
And when you get older, you enter 65 years old, you will probably you will probably need some sleep that is seven to eight hour. And let's take a look at some way that have a good sleep. I don't think that we have enough time since I'm scared that I'll be burning out the time for the other pre presenter. So let's move to the next slide. I also have six tips for better sleep. So for better sleep, we should have a realistic bedtime. Yeah, I know that a lot of us have the alarm to uh, get we wake up, but how about the alarm that help us to have our um, sleep bedtime sleep? So I think it really works, and it will um, constantly change your our your time to sleep. And another one is comfortable temperature and low lights. We have talked about this in the previous slides that if you sleep in low, tem low temperature and low lights, your sleep quality will be better. And also comfortable mattress, pillows and sheets. It's also really, really important. For example, if you sleep in a soft mattress, your back will be in pain. But if you sleep in the hard mattress, it will be definitely better for your back. And another one is screen ban. Why should we ban something like phone, like computer? Because um, it's really affect our sleep. Uh, it has um, like the light, the lighting of the screen. This screen is not good for our eyes. And if we watch too much of this before our bedtime, our vision is gonna be so bad after all. Another one is no caffeine, alcohol, large meals, and tobacco before sleep. You guys you guys know this because um, if you consume too much of these, you expect will experience insomnia, which is will affect your sleep. And another thing for better sleep is exercise during the day. If you are work, work out during the day, you feel tired and they induce sleep for a better sleep. That's the six tips of a better sleep. Now let's get into the, no. Remember sleep is the best meditation and let's get into some myths we thought were right, but actually so wrong. The first one is fall asleep anytime, anywhere is healthy. Well, it actually that is a sign that you are getting not you're not getting enough sleep, and you're falling into micro sleeps or mini sleep episode. This is this is said by the lead study investigator Rebecca Robbins, a postdoctoral research fellow in the Department of Population Health in the New York New York University Lagoon Health, and she also said. This means your body is so exhausted that whenever it has some moment, it's going to pay, repay its sleep debt. Moving to the next one, we used to consider that snoring is annoying but harmless. But that's actually in your dreams, maybe. In fact, loud, pathetic, loud snores interrupted by, interrupted by Pauses in breathing is a marker for sleep apnea. It's a dangerous sleep disorder that, according to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, increases risk for heart attacks, asthma, high blood pressure, cancer, diabetes, kidney diseases, and cognitive and behavioral disorders, and so many more. Moving to the next one, when we can't sleep, we consider counting sleep will be help will be helpful, but this actually points out that this one is nonsense. And why? If we stay in bed, we will start to associate the bed with insomnia. Mrs. Robbins in the previous uh, saying said, she equates it is like going to the gym and standing on a treadmill and doing nothing. But in reality, reality, Robin said, 
it takes a healthier sleeper about 15 minutes to fall asleep. And if you are tossing and turning much longer than that, you should get out of bed, change the environment, environment and do something mindless. And the final myth was remembering your sleep means to have a good sleep. Well, a study out of France shown that people who frequently remember their dreams have higher brain activity in the information processing hub of the brain. They also woke twice as often during the night and were more sensitive to sounds when waking, when sleeping or awake. This points out that their sleep wasn't good, since it wasn't deep and this person will experience exhaustion in the next morning. Well, let me, let me jump into the conclusion and the, the end of this presentation. Well, after doing the research, I've come to the conclusion that although sleep has undeniable advantages, a lot of people are still reported to minimize their sleep hours and having several disorders such as insomnia, sleep deprivation, and so many more. And please, stay up knowledge about the sleep as well as other aspects of life to better your life, your health, both mentally and physically. So, the reason why I do this research is because that Nowadays, I have experienced some uh, disorder in sleep, and I think that I'm not the one who uh, has been experiencing this. So I think that doing this would be uh, helpful. And please get yourself some good sleeps. And that's all I want to say. Thank you for listening and watching. And do you have, and do you have any questions? I will uh, answer you if I can, and maybe uh, do more research to figure out what can it be. Thank you. Em xin kết thúc phần trình bày của mình ạ. À. Em cảm ơn thầy và các bạn ạ. À. In your opinion, which do you think sleep affects more, your mental or your physical problems? Well, I think that it uh, affects our both of those equally. Well, if you can't sleep, as I have mentioned, you will feel tired for the whole day and this affect um, directly to your mental health. And about the physical one, maybe if you didn't have a good sleep, you will uh, experience some kind of back pains or maybe a headache. Yeah, so that's why I think that it's... Uh, the first, I uh, really thank you for your presentation. And I have a discussion with you that there there's uh, some work in your presentation that you need to define because maybe many people don't know about it. And also I have a question for you. Um, we, already, we already know about the importance of sleep. Uh, can you tell me how to keep regular sleep hour in a busy life? For example, now there are many deadlines and I cannot help, I cannot help stay awake to meet the deadline. Uh, why I working is extremely hard and not put the, work, the homework. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I have work that needs to be uh, finished by the midnight. Uh, so do you have any suggestion for me? Thank you. Okay, and I think that I experienced the same thing as you since for the last weekend. <laughs> well, really, I think that we should, um, like, first thing, we have a plan, we should have a plan which say that we should do this deadline in this hour and please restrict it in a, some uh, proper time, in a proper time. And another one I think is quite um, popular. It's you should have an alarm, which alarm you to sleep and alarm you when should we wake up? That's it. So I think it should, we should have a plan for this. Yes. Please, uh, okay. Uh, do you know Steve Harvey, the MC of Miss Universe? And one day I have heard that he say uh, some successful people don't sleep eight hours per day. And what do you think about the fact that uh, some successful people in the world like Steve are 
Elon Musk or somebody else, they don't sleep eight hours per day. And do you think it's unhealthy for them? Because, you know, uh, nowadays they're still healthy and successful. Thank you. Well, this is the one that I really expected to uh, answer. But, well, let me say that I will won't be the one to answer you this. But actually, I'll have this person to uh, explain this for you. It's Dr. Arlon Avidan, uh, the director of the University of California, Los Angeles Sleep Disorders Center. Well, to that question, he answered firmly, no. He said no. And uh, he has a uh, really long exp explanation after that. And I will uh, shorten it by saying that, yeah, that one was effective, but it um, can including some uh, disadvantages, like it can uh, be uh, cognitive impaired, and maybe uh, you will have some memory problems, and also some health, um, condi health worsened condition, to, such as diabetes or obesity. That's it. Ms. Bang Nguyen, please. Uh, okay, I have one question for you. It's also about the sleeping schedule. Uh, but my uh, situation is quite opposite with uh, uh, everyone else. Uh, when talking about deadline and sleep schedule, you guys like want to sleep early, how to keep the sleep schedule, okay? Right, but if the schedule for how how to renovate and get better with someone with their sleep schedule has already been messed up like me myself uh the previous week i stay up late a lot for a deadline now i i don't think i can sleep well anymore um uh, it took me at least uh three or four a.m to uh like get into the properly sleep and uh, uh, stay. I wake up pretty late too. Uh, so do you have any tips for this specific situation? Uh, I hope you can give me some advice. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. For this um, situation, I think that a lot of us has experienced this too. Well, I think that because it's a form into a habit, and we need to change that habit. You know that we should make plans, right? Then just make up a plan, and we need to work on that plan properly, like change it, the habit once again, once again into a new habit. Um, actually, a habit will make will take times, like takes time, like um, we need about thirty three days to form a uh, new habit. So I think that um, 33 days will work. Do you think so? OK. Thank you. Uh, Nick Khan, please. Mm, what do you think about people are using sleeping pills more and more today, even even if even with the elder people, and do you advocate the using sleeping pill things? Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you properly. What do you think about people now today are using more and more sleeping pills, and do you advocate the using sleeping pills things? Well, talking about sleep, well, I think that if they need some of the um, specific way to sleep they should do it if it's uh really good for them it did help them and they think then i think it should be worked and another one i should say is about uh, some sleep disorders it's actually said that if you have serious disorders you shouldn't you shouldn't have followed you shouldn't uh, follow those uh six tips i have mentioned before but seeing a doctor or a specialist Thank you for your answer. That's all I want to hear. Thank you. Can we please? 
Okay, back to my former questions, because I have done some research on the internet and some scientists show our manifest that uh, our sleep is divided into five circles. And per day or during one night, you just finish three or four cycles to be awake, to be conscious uh, in the morning. And what do you think about this statement? Well, I think it's true. It's actually the extended of the stages I that I have said before. And I also read those, but I think it's a little bit complicated and um, to be uh, more simple, I put the four stages in the slide. Oh, because uh, I just saw that they uh, stay, they say that uh, if you want to cancer in the morning or still awake and you just finished your three or four uh, cycles and they don't claim that any uh, unhealthy things of uh, this kind of sleep. So I have a question for you. Thank you. If I have saw, if I have insomnia and I'm into it, eating some food to lessen this state, what should I eat to get a good night's sleep? Um, I think that you should have your um, your meals before uh, sleep for about three or four hours. It will be better. And maybe you can use some, uh, I don't know if this is in uh, English, but it is some kind of flowers. It's uh, blue colored. I don't remember in, in English and Vietnamese either. I'm sorry. But that's it's really uh, effective to your sleep. Yeah. Just don't sleep. Uh, just don't eat anything um, between four to uh, three to four hours before sleep. Uh, what does the brain do when we sleep by Tinh Hoàng Mỹ Ngọc? As I said before, it's uh, also active when we sleep. It just uh, decreased. Well, you know, dreaming, right? That's what our brain do. And there's a lot of things, interesting facts about sleep, uh, it, about dreams. You can search it on the uh, Google or some uh, newspaper. It's really interesting, really. Yeah, I have a question for you. For example, you have to work until 2 or 3 o'clock to sleep, but you have to wake up at 7 o'clock to go to school. So how can I sleep less, but I still go to school and not be tired? That's my uh, question. Um, to your situation, I think you should choose between work and sleep. Um, yeah, since I know that many deadlines have um, some weird, some weird timing. So um, we cannot do anything about it. But remember, we cannot sleep in because um, if you today you cannot sleep much, but uh, the tomorrow, the next day you want to sleep more to uh, like compensate for what have uh, missed in the previous day. It actually doesn't work. I may state the fact right here. It doesn't work. So uh, I think you should choose between one of those things. Yeah. Uh, congratulations for your hard work, Sun Yi. And I have a question for you. So you know that uh, on Tuesday, we must study all day. So we just have 40 to 50 minutes to rest so uh, how long have we taken a nap to make sure that we can have enough time to concentrate on our lesson on in the afternoon? Well, the specialist uh, has suggested that we should have uh, a nap for about like 15 to 20 minutes each uh, noon. It's actually to consider unhealthy to have sleep slow to sleep long to sleep longer than those duration and i think that i remember something to answer to your previous questions um actually something that we um 
to extension to that to what I have said before. There is one situation that has been considered the worst thing to happen. This girl has uh, always had milk before her bedtime, and uh, she uh, has this habit for about three years, and then she was diagnosed with cancer. So that's why I think that we shouldn't have anything to uh, eat between uh, four hours before going to bed. Thank you for your congratulations. I feel real hot, warm hot. Thank you.